Next one. Ooh. Should we factor first? Should we factor first? Yeah, we probably should, right, Salma? So let's see what this factored is. Um, let's see, what two numbers multiply to give me negative 10, add to give me 5, add to give me 3. Oh, OK, that's x minus 5 times x plus 2. Hey, hey, look at that. Those two are the same as those two. Yeah, thank you. Because I meant for them to be the same. But don't you guys notice they're exactly the same, right? And that's awesome because that would really stink if they weren't, right? We would have four different denominators. That would be a really big LCD, correct? But don't you guys agree in our LCD, like whatever we want to call our LCD, it has to contain x plus 5 and it has to contain x minus 2. But if we look over here, these, that's just duplicates, right? So to find our LCD, couldn't we just multiply them and say that's our LCD? Yes. It's kind of like looking at this. x plus 4 plus x plus 3 is equal to 1 over 12. What's the LCD there? It's 12. It's 4, 3, product is 12, right? Doom, doom, their product is right there. Okay, So you just use that product as your LCD. So once we identify the LCD, the best practice is then to multiply everything by your LCD. Let's use red. So x plus 5 times x minus 2. x plus 5 times x minus 2 x plus 5 times x minus 2. And if we didn't multiply by the LCD, then we shouldn't, we shouldn't have any more fractions, right? So let's make sure we did that correctly. Those divide out. Well, those divide out. Oh, wow, all those divide out. So what are we left with? 3x times x minus 2 plus a 1 times x plus 5. I'll put the 1 there. And then equals 7. Do we have any more fractions, Caleb? No. Pretty cool, right? Hmm. You're, oh, you're not writing it down. Did you get your hands available for something else? Oh, OK. Interesting. It makes it easier to OK. So, oh, you were looking that way, so I didn't know if you're, something else was going on. So let's go and distribute 3x squared uh, minus 6x plus x. And then could I subtract <laughs> a 7 on both sides? So plus 5 minus 7 equals 0, because again, I notice this is a quadratic. So 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 equals 0. Ugh, factoring. Should I just do quadratic formula? No, I mean, let's try to see if we can factor it, right? I mean, we know these are not fun, but let's just try. So again, what are the things we know? We know it's going to give us a binomial squared, right? We know the first term, the first two terms need to multiply to give us 3x squared. So let's use 3x and x, right? Yes? Could I do 6x and 1 half x? Yes. Could if you wanted to deal with fractions, right? But I mean, who wants to deal with fractions? Um, so let's deal with that. And then the other two numbers have to multiply to give me negative 2, right? Whoa. What do you need to multiply to give you negative 2? Positive 1, negative 2, negative 1, positive 1. So really, we just need to figure out, does it look like this? Or does it look like this? Now, obviously, there's only one sign can be there. But we got to figure out which one is it. And so technically, there's like four options. But guys, oh my god, guess and check, there's only four options, right? I mean, you should, with practice, be able to do this in your head. But let's look at this. Like, don't you agree if as long as once, oh, that should be like negative positive. I should write it like this. There you go. If we have positive 1, that should be negative 2. Negative 1, that should be positive 2. No matter where you do it, that always gives you a negative 2, right? All the way around. OK. So again, we're trying, we know that the first, remember FOIL, first outer inner last? The first always, always gives us 3x squared. The last always gives us negative 2. So we got to do the outer and the inner to get negative 5x. I already know the answer. I can see it in my head. right? So you think about this and you say, all right, if I need to get to negative 5, I know that 3 times 2 gives me 6. And that means I'm only one off to get to 5, right? And if I want 3 times 2 to be a negative 6 to give me a negative 5, I want the bit to be a negative. So if I did 3 times negative 2, that gives me negative 6. 
and then that would be x times a positive 1. So I think I found the answer already. That should be a positive and a negative. And just double check. Like if you're like, oh, I made a mistake, then go back to your original problem and like rework it. But again, I mean, this factoring practice, guys, we've got to be able to get to this. Because I don't want you guys to have to go to the quadratic formula. And I don't want you to have to do some of the longer methods we teach with this type of factoring. Okay? We, should be able to, we should start visualizing this stuff in our head. So now, since it's equal to 0, I can apply a 0 product property. Um, x is equal to negative 1 third. x is equal to 2. Should I walk away? No, right, Reef? Because 2 is extraneous. Why is 2 extraneous? Because when I plug 2 um, back into my equation, you can see that it makes the denominator equal to 0. Okay? All right. Wow. Whew. So when yes. You, 